Aliens on 4K. This is going to be my thoughts on the movie, my thoughts on the actual 4K disc, my thoughts on other Aliens movies, and I'm just going to talk about parts of the movie that stood out to me in a review of some such, and I will be shipping Ripley and Hicks really hard, a lot. While I was taking my movie watching notes, I took I wrote no less than 11 hearts. So there is going to be some Hicks and Ripley shipping. So trigger warning if you don't like that. All right, a couple notes about this menu artwork. One, what in the world? Couldn't they have just taken like a normal looking shot instead of make it like, like look at all the edges. Like it looks so weird. This is a very weird looking thing. And if you look at this whole picture, the thing that's in the most like sharp focus of the whole thing is this spot right here. <laughs> so if you kind of back up out here, that is, this is very odd, but we're not going to spend the whole thing, the whole time on that. All right. I know I brought this bad boy out for my original alien review, my original uh, alien 4k review that I did a while ago. Uh, but this is actually from this movie. And I got this a long time ago. I'm guessing, I don't know, around 1990 when the special edition of Aliens came out. And I had not seen it at that time. And I didn't see this movie until, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Like, I, it just took me a long time to see it. I always wanted to see it my whole life. But I had this queen alien as part of my life. And my mom stepped on it a lot. And she would swear when she stepped on it. And this queen alien would kill a lot of my action figures in very horrible and graphic ways, and I love playing with this thing. And I don't play with it anymore because I'm a grown-up. Right, I'm going to give you some quick context of how I feel about all the Aliens movies. And then for those people that are very eager to hear about the 4K, I will get to that. And I am going to be getting, I'm going to be talking about the 4K throughout while I'm talking about the movie as well. So I first watch a watched Alien, on DVD, I rented the whole box set from my school, I think, my university. I rented the whole box set because I'm like, I'm a grown-up. I'm watching Aliens. Parents can't tell me what to do. Uh, I So I watched all four. And then I think I, or maybe I bought the box set and then I sold it after I watched it on DVD. But I remember that I, at one point, I bought Alien and I watched it. And I was like, nope, I don't like the cheesy alien and it's too slow or whatever it was. And ultimately I was like, I don't, I don't like it. Right. So I sold it. I got rid of it. I know that's blasphemy, but then what happens with good movies happened. And I just couldn't stop thinking about the movie. I just was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And I think a couple of years later, I, I rebought this copy, uh, at a, a pawn shop. And I also got this and so when it comes to aliens, so I, I like Alien now, love Aliens. This time watching it on 4K was probably my, might have only been my second time seeing it, maybe my third time. But Aliens, or Alien 3, I hated. I hated. And I, I still absolutely hate it. And to the point where that movie doesn't even ruin the franchise for me because I don't even consider it as existing because I hate it so much. And then same thing with Alien 4. I just, I hated it. There was one of those two movies that had a really cool shot of an alien like swimming through the water. And that shot is incredible and is the best part of the whole movie, which one, whichever one of those it is. Uh, but I, I really hated both of those movies, 3 and 4. And then this ridiculousness came out. This is an awesome set, by the way. Amazing special features on this thing. I got this at a pawn shop for a couple dollars. I digress. So Prometheus, I... So, so for the first half of the movie, I was just loving it. I was loving that it was like big brain sci-fi stuff. And then it kind of, I felt like it kind of devolved at the end and kind of just got really stupid. Um, but I love Prometheus. I, flaws and all, I acknowledge that it has a lot of really stupid stuff. Characters make some really stupid choices. But I love Prometheus for all of its visual beauty, for the gore, for the, the special effects, the music, everything. Uh, and I forgive all the complete stupidity of that movie. So I love that movie. Alien Covenant, I hate. I hated Alien Covenant. And just like I hate Alien 3, like Alien Covenant, I disavow as having happened. 
and I can go into that more if you want me to. But I, <laughs> I hated that one. So maybe I'm going to like Alien Romulus. We'll see. Or maybe I'm done with new Alien movies. I don't know. So I do already have a review of this up on my channel. Um, but just real quick thought on the 4K. This 4K is one of the best 4Ks I've seen, and it is extremely filmic. I felt like I was watching a film print, and it is pristine and beautiful and an amazing 4K experience. Hands down. Now let's talk about the Aliens 4K. So they were released as a trio of James Cameron movies, Alien, True Lies, or sorry, Aliens, True Lies, and The Abyss. Now I watched True Lies, and this movie is a hoot. <laughs> I love this movie. It is an absolute blast. However, if you watch my review, I was actually distracted during the movie by the extremely annoying grain management and the waxiness of the face or whatever whatever word you wanted to do, use to describe the fact that the detail on their faces is completely wiped out in medium and long shots. So I enjoyed watching the movie. It's the best it's ever looked, better than the complete crunchiness of the DVD, um, but it was frustrating. So I was enjoying the movie, but it was frustrating because I kept getting pulled out of the movie by the way that the 4K looked. So when I put in this bad boy, one, I'm very excited because if there's something in this world that I love, it's aliens and machine guns. They just, it just warms my heart. Like, I feel like when I experience things with that have to do with aliens and machine guns, it adds years to my life. And so I was excited to just sit down and watch this because I remembered really, really enjoying it. And I was excited to watch the 4K. And I know that it was going to be kind of controversial, controversial uh, because of the, the re restoration. And I am happy to report that despite some kind of weirdness with the restoration, I absolutely loved how this looked. And I'll, I'll try to explain why. It's a little bit weird, but I accept the way that it looks. Now I'll tell you, I would prefer that it looked like Alien, that it looked like a clean film print with the tingly, wonderful, intact grain structure, and that it looked like a film. I would prefer that. However, the way that it looks is really, really great. Nothing close to frustrating like True Lies. I was never distracted by any problems with this restoration. And the real scene is right behind me when this part happened and when they weld or the they cut through the door in her little ship is when I basically came to terms with the way that this 4K looks and I accepted it and I moved on. And then throughout the movie, I was looking close at their faces. I was looking close in the background. I was looking uh, in in very like uniform colors, bright and dark, just looking for grain. Like I was really, really looking. And I know some people say that that ruins your movie experience. I can do both. I, I can watch and look for the details while also enjoying the movie. Also, I've seen the movie before. So I, I really wanted to watch to see the quality of this 4K. So. To me, it doesn't ruin the 4K to be to be analyzing it while watching it. Not at all. I actually, it brings me great joy to do that. All right, right here. So they finish the cut, the door cut, it falls down, and then you have this bright, bright white light coming through. And it's, it's not gonna pick up as good on my phone. It's like washing out here. Uh, but here's what I mean. So on a... Uh, for example, if this was the movie Alien on 4K, right, where it is looks like a film print, right, with the tingly film grain, this re these really, really bright areas are really good places on 4Ks to see the grain structure. It kind of, like, reveals the grain structure. Like, for example, on Quigley Down Under, when they show the long shots and you have the big blue sky and them riding their wagon and all the terrain, like, you, it just gives you a really good taste of what the grain structure of that, of that, transfer is or of that film is right so i i noticed something weird here throughout this part and i was like oh where's the grain like it's not here and i was like oh no and so it, it like put me on guard but as i watched the movie very very carefully there's just incredible amounts of detail and 
I could not see, to my eyes, any details, I guess, that had been... I couldn't detect any details that had been scrubbed away like they had been in True Lies. To me, this transfer is incredible. Again, with an asterisk saying I would prefer it look like aliens or alien. But given that they did do some kind of grain reduction, somehow the detail remains, like in the faces. I was watching their faces throughout, and I never saw anything like True Lies, like not even once. So for the entire rest of the movie, I, again, I was watching close the whole time, right? But I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Again, I'll always say I would prefer it to look like Alien, but I thought it looked awesome, like amazing. And I had only seen this on DVD before. And so I was just sitting in there just like drinking in the details and the color and the depth of this movie and... I, I did the special edition because James Cameron says it was his preferred version. So that's the one I watched. And I will say that I cannot imagine any 17 minutes cut out of this. I'm going to have to watch the theatrical one and see if I like miss it because I think that like there wasn't a part. You know how sometimes you watch extended versions? You're like, ah, this is extended. This is only for super fans. Like this is a boring extended part. Like, no, like. The whole time during this movie, I was just like, okay, the special edition is the way to go. I, I don't want to give up a single minute of this. All right, so a quick note on my setup here. This is an 85-inch Sony X950H, and it has been professionally calibrated by Value Electronics, which is where I got it in New York. And I have been extremely happy with the calibration of all the different modes on this thing. And the, the 4K player is a Panasonic UBA20, which according to the recommendation of Value Electronics, I left a lot of the settings because the TV is calibrated, right? So it's a lot of factory settings on the UBA20. And then as far as my eyes go, I'm not a professional at this. I have now watched a lot of 4K movies and uh, you know, I try to study the reviews and see which ones are good. And uh, if there is an issue, I like to put it in and go and see that issue for myself so that I can recognize it, um, which is why these James Cameron movies have been so exciting to take part in, because I can see for myself, be like, okay, that is what True Lies on 4K looks like, and this is how I feel about it, and this is how I see it. And you need to watch my review because my wife noticed it as well, and I didn't tell her anything that had gone on with that restoration. So my point is, I'm not a professional, but I do watch a lot of movies, and I do have a calibrated TV. I do also have an OLED TV. I did watch I watched this on this one behind me, not the OLED. Uh, so, so take my opinion with a grain of salt, but I think the 4K looks incredible. Now one thing with the 4K, the disc, is that a lot of the special effects stand out more, right? Like you can kind of see the seams a little bit more. For example, this is clearly a little miniature, like a little remote control miniature vehicle. It's incredibly detailed and it looks awesome, but in in 4K, it's just it just stands out more like the fake stuff. But it doesn't matter because the movie is so good and the writing is so good and the pacing is perfect. That's another thing about the special edition. I think the pacing is absolutely perfect so I just I can't imagine it I gotta go check that theatrical one out and see see how I can compare it but what do you think do you like theatrical or the special edition better anyway so like I said I'm not a pro at this so take it with a grain of salt what I'm seeing on the screen but I wanted to let you know kind of where I'm at where the TV's calibrated my eyes aren't calibrated but I just I was blown away by it and as far as the sound goes, I'm using a, oh, that's loud. Let's pause that. I'm using a Sony HT-ST 5000 where it kind of uh, simulates the Dolby Atmos. So let's see if it we can do the display on here. There you go. Push the button. Hey, Al. What? Remember you sent some wildcatters out in the middle of nowhere last week uh, out past the Ilium range? Yeah, right. what? Uh, well, one of them's on the horn, uh, mom and pop survey. Anyway, so it simulates Dolby Atmos. It's got these 
upward firing speakers and a whole bunch of speakers in front. Obviously, it's not a true surround sound system. I just since moving, I haven't reset everything up, mostly because this is a living room setting, waiting for the home theater downstairs anywhere. Anyway, too much information, unless you're interested in following my home theater setup issues, but most of my speakers are in boxes in a closet. So given my setup, go on this journey with me on the movie and the 4K. The sound is incredible. Picture's great. Let's get into the movie. So one of the things in particular about this little miniature rover, I guess, that feels like a miniature to me instead of like a full-blown car and that suspends my dis that breaks my disbelief a little bit is that as it rolls over the ground it doesn't it doesn't seem heavy right it just seems like a light remote control car driving over and i don't know if if it's just the way that it moves like as it just like as it hits bumps like it moves a little too easily and that the ground that it's on isn't doesn't seem to be reacting from it but that stands out a little bit more in 4k that that is clearly just a little remote control car i will take a little remote control car that i can tell is a remote control car every day of the week over shiny cartoony cgi you know what now that i'm standing right next to the tv and it's having close-ups of people's faces there might be a little bit of grain management doing some stuff to their faces, but I'm telling you, from, what is this, 12 feet away from an 85-inch screen, I was not bothered by the restoration like I was with True Lies. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're, if you're worried about the quality of this 4K, like, absolutely, it is amazing. Not ideal, but it is great. The Dolby Atmos... The Dolby Vision, the and just the sheer detail is is awesome. Uh, not bothered. I I I was just I was gonna talk about reviews that I I discount because of how they look at it, but I'm not gonna do that. I just to me my eyes on my set, my calibrated set, I think it looks awesome and I think it's absolutely worth the purchase. And all I want to do after I finished watching it is watch it again on 4K. It looks great. Um, I did see one review that suggested that some people might prefer watching the Blu-ray over the 4K because the restoration, the annoying restoration stuff is less in your face on the Blu-ray. Nope, I disagree. This 4K is great. And I just, I kind of like, it's like when I talk about Maltese Falcon where it's like dumping dark chocolate into my eye holes or whatever, it's kind of uh, like liquid dark chocolate. It's kind of like that. However, not as like perfectly filmic, but it is very enjoyable for what it is does that make sense or is that that i think this movie is like the perfect sequel like the first movie is just like so creepy and moody and like uh you know just one monster and one crew of people and this movie gets bigger in all the like good sequel ways like action and everything but like her character just continuing from the first movie like where she's just woken up with a nightmare and where her motivation to go back is to assist in kind of destroying it so that she can overcome it. Uh, and she wants to assist in the way that she can, right? She's not, right now when she calls Burke on the phone and she's like, I'm in, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll go on this mission with you. She's not like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to get uh, an assault rifle and I'm going to get a flamethrower and I'm going to tape them together. And then I'm going to put on like webbing gear and I'm going to get like grenades and shotgun and you know what I mean like that's not what she's thinking she's thinking I'm gonna go help how I can help and I just couldn't uh get over what an amazing character she is in this movie like as a woman and as a person her character is so interesting and her arc is so incredibly fulfilling and cathartic in this movie and I'm gonna talk about that more as we go but I just love Ellen Ripley as a character. She's so compelling and interesting. Speaking of this 4K again, actually, so let these, well, I've only, I haven't seen The Abyss yet, but let True Lies and Aliens be an example to, to not use 
that kind of restoration again. I think we got away with it with Aliens. I think we made it through successfully with Aliens, but we we kind of messed up True Lies a little bit. So let's let's not let's not keep doing movies like that. Uh, but but like I said, I think we made it through intact with Aliens. I think it, I think it is a good worthwhile product. But well, yeah, let's 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 restore stuff how we did with Alien, shall we? I love the music in this movie. I love. Every time it has any like militaristic stuff, it has that drumming in the background, kind of like, you know, a little bit like Starship Troopers would eventually become. But I love how the camera is just going around the spaceship and showing all these huge bombs and tons of guns, and you've got the militaristic drumming and foreshadowing right there, the load lifter. So cool. And I just think the soundtrack is so perfect where it has like the creepy, moody side to it, but then it has like the bombastic like drums, like militaristic side. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit later how James Horner does his James Horner thing. Um, but specifically, he you hear Wrath of Khan in this in this movie big time. So I like that there's a lot of parallel scenes with the original movie, like you have the wake up scene, whereas the first movie, it's like so slow and contemplative and uh, like more hard sci-fi, like slower 2001 type sci-fi versus like action sci-fi. But you still get the cool wake up scene uh, here, but instead of being a, a crew of, of uh, like a freight crew, it's a bunch of tough people. And I, I will say, as I was watching this, all these doors open, and it showed Ripley. Obviously, you have the amazing resolution. I think on her upper left thigh, I think I could see stretch marks. Like, no kidding. You know how sometimes, like, before stretch marks go purple, they just kind of, like, they're like those indent indented versions, but they're still skin color? I think I can see those on there. So thank you, 4K, for that. I'm not going to show it in this video, but... Thanks for that, because, you know, I was wondering. Love this. First thing he does, sticks his cigar in. It's so cool that as everybody's waking up, they use this time to kind of teach you something about their character. Love the Sarge. He is, he is classic military Sarge. He's classic Sarge in general. I, you know, these are Marines. I don't know if these are the Semper Fi kind of Marines, because uh, they're in space or whatever, but you know, all the sergeants that I've worked with have been an army sergeants. But in the Marine Corps, like a day on yeah, the farm. I guess they're still in the Semper Fi Space Marines. Every paycheck of fortune, every formation of parade. I love the call. Oh my God. Man, floor is freezing. Anyway, I love, I love it. I love the, the just the confidence and the bravado that they wake up with. I much prefer this kind of horror movie where it's like everyone's like tough and want to face things confidently even if it's misplaced confidence versus like a horror movie that's like a bunch of party goers and they're like we're all gonna die and we're just gonna run around screaming i just i love this where they're all like him especially where he's just like <laughs> just walking around in his in his underwear with his cigar just telling everyone how much he he loves the core uh so yeah love it look at this little baby bill paxton in this movie look at this <laughs> He's very annoying in this movie. He's he he fits perfectly in this movie, but he's definitely the most annoying of these guys. I love how she's all upset that there's a synthetic on board. But my goodness, listen to Bishop's voice. It is impossible for me to harm, or by a mission of action, allow to be harmed a human being. That is a silky smooth voice right there. I feel like kind of a fifth wheel around here. Is there anything I can do? I don't know. Is there anything you can do? I love how he answers her question. Well, I can drive that loader. And here we have some more foreshadowing that she knows how to drive the loader. I love this, just the writing of this movie, how it just builds and builds and builds and everything is a payoff from what came before. This is really good. Any movie that has like a gear up scene, like whether it's Batman or any military movie where they're just putting all their gear on, like I love that. I love gear up scenes. And last time i saw it i was so focused on his like shin armor that i didn't realize like look at his boots those are straight up just like vietnam combat boots pretty sure they're vietnam combat boots um 
Either way, they're like, I used to have a, a exact pair of those. Uh, pretty cool to see it. I don't know if they're Vietnam combat boots, but they look like it. And I had a pair, so it's very nostalgic to see them on on our on our beautiful, lovely boy Hicks. I love the Sarge. He's just he's right. He's rushing them all. He's like, get on the ready line, go go go. He's like he's like hyping them up, and he's he's uh, you know they're all getting ready. They're they're professionals of what they do, and he is. I think he he is such a good Sarge because he's just he's like the energy behind everything they do, which makes it even more tragic when he dies to just see how they fall apart without him. I love the the drop ship. Any anytime just like machine guns and aliens makes me happy. I love drop shipping from space, which is in a lot of different sci-fi franchises. And in this one, uh they've got the StarCraft uh transport lady in here. And I love that it's showing how everyone's reacting to this like crazy wild bumpy ride. And then just look at Hicks. How's Hicks taking it? <laughs> He's asleep. <laughs> There's always someone that can sleep in the back of an APC or in the back of uh, an armored vehicle or something just bouncing all over the place. So it's cool to see it in uh, portrayed on screen. It's also yet another thing in a long list of things that makes Hicks very endearing. I love watching their squad movements in the rain. I love watching uh, I love watching pros moving in the rain, not being bothered by it. This this movie has so many cool like sci-fi military things in it. The motion tracker is so iconic and it's so cool to see the origin of it here. Uh, so many people have imitated it or copied it or even this own franchise just does it again. But my goodness, the not motion a, tracker. Not a goddamn thing. And one thing that's cool about this is um, right now you have the guys doing the motion tracker and it's kind of the only thing they're doing. But later when there's less of them, you have their dual wielding. It's like motion tracker and a gun. I mean, Hicks was still holding his, but Hudson, he's got his rifle uh, slung and he's just using the motion tracker like I said later when there's less of them it's cool to see how they have to basically do more things with less people all right this scene is awesome for so many reasons right here so she's hesitant to go inside because she knows she knows she knows what's going on and Hicks notices are you all right Okay, that is the start of the Ripley and Hicks shipping. So it just looks like an innocent, he's just checking on her. But as we go, he you can just see that he has an extra special care for her. And my goodness, I know I'm not supposed to be feeling this in this kind of movie, but it gets very swoony. All right, so since last time I watched this, there's been a lot of hullabaloo about how because it's been a while since I've watched it, how Ripley is one of the best female characters, female action characters of all time, right? And so this time watching it, I was watching for reasons why that is. And um, it, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is that she's so incredibly maternal. So, so let me go back a little bit. She does action scenes extremely well and convincingly, but not over the top like a female James Bond. and But then at the same time, she's like extremely maternal. Like this part right here when they first find Newt, where the kid's like resisting. And look what she does. Kid's, kid's trying to get away. And she's just, she won't let her go. And what happens? She does it, right? So... Like, not everyone would know that that's how you handle it, right? So she's had a daughter. We know that. And so it's just really awesome to watch her in all the different facets of her character. And one of the the coolest facets of her character, and they even decided to, you know, make the whole artwork based on it, is her kind of maternal, motherly aspect of her character. And I think right there is an example of of it in action. And speaking of her being like the best female action character or best female character or whatever, 
I, as I've watched it and as I've been thinking about it, I think she might be the best female action character ever, period. Like, who is a contender at this point? Like, I don't even know if anyone comes close. Like, I know, like, Leia is awesome, but I think Leia, like, if you're if you're looking for best female character, I think Ripley feels more like a female than Leia does, if that makes sense. I think she's a better character than Leia is what I'm saying. Um, because I think she's more multifaceted. She's not just like, oh, you're just like strong and you can do action. She's She can do the really tender stuff and the action stuff. So I'd love to hear other candidates for awesome, most awesome female characters ever. Or at least female action characters, I guess. But I can't think of anyone that I think does a better job than Ripley. So now Ellen Ripley is talking to Newt about what's going on, about where her parents are. The soldiers. It won't make any difference. That's disgusting. Anyway, so she, one, Ripley asks her where her parents are and she says they're dead. And I think it shows like a trust, like Ripley respecting Newt that she just accepts it. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Instead of being like, are you sure they're dead? It's just like, no, she trusts that this girl knows that they're dead. And I like what she said just barely where where Ripley's like, These, they're soldiers, they're here to protect you. And it's so ominous and scary and foreboding how Newt just says, it's not gonna matter. It won't make any difference. And it's like, oh. like here's these guys that are just like loaded. They have all the weapons in the world, right? And Newt is a child and it's just like, it's not gonna matter. That And then the scary music comes in. I love that. Just like I said, the pacing of this movie is just perfect how it just builds and builds. And that line right there where Newt says it won't matter is is so scary. Love it. So unfortunately, this movie also does another thing that has unfortunately become a stereotype of officers is that you have an inexperienced officer leading a bunch of experienced enlisted NCO type people and when the crap goes down, he freezes and gets a bunch of people killed. And so that is that is very hard to watch. Um, whether you're aware of times that that's happened in real life or what, but it is a stereotype that is hard to shake. And this movie shows it, and it feels genuine. That, that this guy, like he means well, but he just doesn't have the experiment experience, and he freezes up, and it's it's rough. Do you know what's great that I love in this movie? They show it, it's it's very, very brief, and they show it a handful of times, but exploding aliens. Look at this. <laughs> Can we just appreciate this in slow motion? Can we just just take the time to look at the, look at this? <laughs> I just love I love chunky explosions with aliens or ships or anything, but look at that, just little bits and chunks of alien flying everywhere and the yellow blood spraying everywhere. It's just, it's just those little things that just bring joy to my life. You know what I mean? Okay, see if you can hear it right here. Straight up Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan music from the end of that movie during the battle. Listen to this. It's, it's straight up James Horner ripping himself off. <laughs> hear it anyway i can't obviously just show it all but it is james horner is one of those people that you know when he's doing a movie because you hear his his themes over and over like in uh enemy at the gates or troy or avatar you hear that same music and probably kind of originated from the wrath of khan which you then hear again right here so anyway he's a great composer but there's definitely times where you're like ah, i hear that other movie you did in there two things one here she is protecting newt again and two look at this amazing shot right here right there it just it looks so good you just can't like even though sometimes the practical effects look like miniatures you just can't beat the fact that it's actually captured on film that's my opinion 
I love all the door welding in this movie. So much door cutting and door welding. I just, I love how much they use it in here. And it's uh, the game Half-Life. Um, I feel like kind of borrowed that from here. And uh, anyway, just love seeing it. This scene right here. This is another, uh, this is another Hicks and Ripley shipping scene. He's giving her a little tracker. Then I can find you anywhere in the complex on you. Aww. Look at that. Look at that. Speaking of this, this is another reason I hate the movie Alien 3. Because I just... I just don't accept it as being canon in the story. Speaking of which, though, there's actually an alternate choice. Uh, on Audible, there is an alternate script for the movie Alien 3 that they turned into an audio drama. I think it's from like 2019 um, by William Gibson. And that is the Alien 3 in my mind, uh, where he lives, she lives, Newt lives. And that's the only Alien 3 that I will accept honestly. Um, but what really happens after that Alien 3 is that these guys, and this is maybe a little spoilery, but this is fan fiction, but this is the only way I can read it, is, is they're going to get married and they're going to raise new as their own and they're going to have all kinds of babies and it's going to be amazing and they defeated the aliens. It's just like in Roman Holiday where I'm like, yeah, after she goes on her press tour, they're going to get married and have babies. That's just, that's how I watch movies now. It's just maybe I've, I've become my mother. I don't know. But that's what's happening. These two get married. They're going to have babies. They're going to raise new. It's going to be beautiful. And I love to watch their relationship budding in this movie. And killing aliens. That's cool, too. Yeah, and just this whole Ripley putting Newt to bed tired. scene is, uh, is, again, just Ripley being awesome. This part's awesome. My mommy always said there were no monsters. No real ones, but there are. Yes, there are. There. Again, Ripley respecting Newt by being like, "Yes, there are monsters." I mean, Newt knows this by now, but I just think I think it's awesome where she's like, "Why would parents tell their kids that there's no monsters?" Anyway, just again another example of how Ripley handles Newt and how Newt delivers lines in the movie that are so heavy it's cool watching them relate to each other when she asks if she ever had a baby and she's telling her how she had a little girl but she's gone now so it's just it's just it's so cool watching her and newt their relationship you didn't even warn them why didn't you warn them burke okay look what if that ship didn't even exist did you ever think about that i didn't know so okay so one thing that really gets me in these kind of movies where there's like a killer thing and then there's some some corporate guy and he's like, no, 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 we can't kill it. We got to study it. We're going to get rich off of it. Like my question is, does he genuinely not feel threatened by this thing where he's like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll just capture it. We'll study it. We'll get super rich. Like, like, is that, is that his character that he's just genuinely not afraid of this thing or he, he's so determined to get rich that that it's worth the risk i don't know it's just it blows my mind when you have these like the corporate character in these movies where they're just like no no we got to keep it alive and it's like what are you talking about like are you do you not see what's going on around you anyway boop. uh tv show mad about you my sister loved that show and this guy was in it so it's hard to it's hard to separate him from that character to this character i love this to a personal friend so she's like this if, if I get impregnated, I want you to kill me, right? And, over and, under and he's like, let's make sure it doesn't come to that. Grenade launcher. And I love Go this. Away. My goodness. This might as well be a steamy scene for how swoony it makes me feel. <laughs> Look at my goodness. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting flustered watching Hicks teach Ripley rifle stuff is just uh <laughs> that's very swoony for me uh it's just man I just how do you go from this to the crappiness of Alien 3 it doesn't exist that's how uh I love this 
I love Hicks teaching her. I love watching watching their relationship grow. Also, look at that. Look at that exploding alien down there. <laughs> nice. Here's one of the very sweetest Ripley motherly moments. Proceeding, in my opinion, the absolute scariest part of this whole movie. And the part of this movie that sticks with me and that has stuck with me and that I think about all the time. She sees the specimen containers for the face huggers on the floor. Oh my gosh. I can't even handle it. I know it's just somebody like moving a little rubber puppet across the floor, but this scene is so terrifying. Like I have like goosebumps right now. Like just <laughs> so gross. I mean, look at where I paused it. Look at her face. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's so gross. That is, the, that is the stuff nightmares are made of. Maybe it's good I didn't see this movie till a lot later, even though I was playing with the toys my whole life. <laughs> Gosh, that's so terrifying. Here you go. Now you got trackers and rifle dual wielding because there's not enough of them. And just, I love all these motion tracker scenes. They're so classic and awesome and terrifying. Also the 4K handling just the flooding red on the screen looks really good. All right, compare this to the to the vent scene in the first movie. <laughs> All right. The first movie, one of my biggest criticisms of the first movie is that when the alien is in like the vent and it like the guy turns around and it's just like like a guy in a suit holds his arms out like it just looks awful. But that that looks good. That looks more, they look more like aliens and animals than in the first movie where it's like, oh, that's just like a skinny guy in a costume. <laughs> so this movie, this the aliens in this movie are a lot more believable. And I know it's blasphemous to say that about the first movie. It's just, seriously, it just looks like a skinny guy in a costume on many of the scenes in the first movie. So that scene where he pokes his head up and sees them all crawling, that's like a, that's like a highlight shot of the movie right there. This tunnel chase slash battle is so awesome and intense. And uh, you've got Vasquez's leg getting burned from the blood when she stuck her boot on the thing's head and shot it, which was amazing, by the way. Um, but there's kind of a the redemption of the lieutenant here, right? Like he kind of screwed up majorly first earlier in the movie. And here he is coming back for Vasquez. And it's pretty touching to see that. You got more of the Wrath of Khan music here, and then you have the sad but awesome redemption of a lieutenant right here. The grenade. Aww. She's absolutely frantic having just lost Newt. Love this little joke here with the elevator. <laughs> you got Ripley taking care of burnt up picks. Just watching their relationship grow. All right, so Ripley has lost Newt, and she goes into just full-on nothing-will-stop-me mode. And the cool thing about it is that everything she's doing is believable, right? Like, Hicks taught her how to use the guns, and she's super determined, but she's still not, like... At no point is it just like, okay, Ripley's a dude now. No, like she, like she's a hundred percent a woman in this entire movie, including once you see her holding the weapons, like her frame, like you can, you can see her, her like biceps and everything. Like she, she is still very, very female. And this part might be one of my absolute favorite parts of this entire movie or any movie taping a flamethrower to a machine gun. I mean, that just right there, that added like three years to my life just looking at that. <laughs> so cool. Okay. Here comes one of the most swoony moments of the whole movie. See you, Hicks. Dwayne. What? It's Dwayne. Aww. Alan. Don't be gone long, Alan. <laughs> That is cool. That's another very swoony moment where they exchange first names. Another thing I love about this part is that she's constantly getting ready. Like, she's already out in the scary area. She's already going down into the scary 
alien basement. And look at her, she's getting, she's, she hasn't wasted any time. You know what I mean, like, she's, she's still loading. She's still putting on, like, her webbing gear. She's still getting ready. She's not just like, oh, let me sit in the ship and get completely ready. She's like, no, I am going to rescue this child. And on the way there, I'm still, like, getting more and more ready. I just, I love it. Here comes the most epic hero shot. Yes! Gives me goosebumps. It's so cool. Look at her tiny little arms. Look at that. Look at those little things. You know, she's not, she's not Rambo, but she is a determined mama. She is gonna make it happen. I love that throughout this entire scene, while she's escaping with Newt, that you have like the heat waves in front of the camera. So every time it shows her, there's just like this ripply hat, ripply, pun intended. Uh, just like this heat waves in front of her. It's just, it's so like real and visceral. Right there, you see how, how heat wavy it is. I love this, how she, how she communicates with the queen. She shows her, shows her what the flamethrower can do. And then the queen calls off her drones. She threatens her, threatens the eggs. The queen's like, fine, you can go. This is so disgusting. But but I love this. Once she once she feels threatened and she's just like, you know what? I am gonna burn you. Right here. <laughs> is this not one of the coolest? Is that not one of the coolest things ever put to film in a sci-fi movie ever? Ripley holding this kid and flamethrowing all these scary eggs. That's <laughs> so cool. At the risk of sounding dramatic or overdoing it, this might be the perfect movie. I'm sorry. I think it's incredible. If not the perfect movie, it's definitely the perfect sequel. I just think it's so awesome. <laughs> this movie is so much fun. I had so much fun watching this, and I just can't wait to watch it again 4k is it ideal no doesn't look like alien but is it bad not at all it looks really good the, i didn't think the detail was wiped away i thought the movie is abundantly detailed like you can see anyway so so much detail i never i never felt like it was compromised now it was weird that the grain was re reduced but i felt like the gr the detail survived somehow all right alien 3 does not exist for me except for the audible audio drama, the William Gibson script for the movie, um, because Ripley and Hicks are going to raise Newt, and they're going to have babies, and they're going to live happily ever after, and, and that's the end of it. We'll see how Alien Romulus is later this year. So overall, absolutely recommend this. It's, it's nothing, nothing close to how bad True Lies is, uh, even though True Lies was fun as well. This movie is great. I loved it. I'd love to hear what you think, and uh, let me know. Let me know what you think of the 4K if you're gonna get it, or if you are put off by all of the weird AI restoration stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through this through this longy, and uh, see you on the next one.